There is a ton of new information by way of rumor regarding Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed Shadows game and what the company originally had planned for this game. Specifically, the claim is that they did indeed have a Japanese male protagonist as the main character before they decided to replace him with Yasuke. Furthermore, it's claimed that Yasuke was chosen because of 2020 the summer of love, the Black Lives Matter movement, and all of the rioting that took place in the wake of George Floyd's death. And there is more than just that as well. So let's get into this. Before we do, I'd like to ask, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at the Trent Report. Wrote this up over at thatparkplace.com. And this information comes from a very, very well done video by Endymion, friend of the channel. And uh, I'll probably be covering a bunch of stuff that he covered in that video. So if you want to go over and watch that video, I suggest you do, because there is a ton, ton of information that he shares. And it doesn't just pertain to Assassin's Creed Shadows, but that is what we are going to focus on here. But before we get to that, uh, just to provide a little bit of context, Ubisoft did indeed delay this game to February 2025. At the same time, it announced it might barely break even during its current financial year. And I'm not just talking about the game. I'm talking about the entire company might break even for its fiscal year. In a press release, the company said this, the company now expects net bookings of around 1.95 billion euros and about and around break even non-IFRS operating income and free cash flow. It went on to announce the delay of Assassin's Creed Shadows and why it was doing so. It said Assassin's Creed Shadows will now be released on February 14, 2025. While the game is feature complete, the learnings from the Star Wars Outlaws release let us provide additional time to further polish the title. This will enable the biggest entry in the franchise to fully deliver on its ambition, notably by fulfilling the promise of our dual protagonist adventure with Naoi and Yasuke bringing two very different gameplay styles. Ubisoft added, we are departing from the traditional season pass model. All players will be able to enjoy the game at the same time on February 14. And those who pre-order the game will be granted the first expansion for free. The game will mark the return of our new releases on Steam day one. So that is what Ubisoft said. There, that was their announcement. That was their explanation. Obviously wanting further time to polish the game, indicating that there was uh, bugs and things like that, uh, similar to what we saw with Star Wars Outlaws. And we already kind of seen some of that stuff Obviously, their most recent promotional trailer for the game saw a horse literally like gliding through uh, this force that it was walking on, very similar to what we saw uh, with Star Wars Outlaws. So probably a lot of things like that. Uh, but it looks like there might be a lot more issues as well. So Endymion claims that uh, they actually changed the game and they had originally featured a male Japanese protagonist instead of Yasuke. Uh, he said this, uh, and he also says that the game might actually be delayed even further past February. So that might there might be more delays than just this one right now. But, so he says this. My source told me, however, that they heard February 2025 is simply a placeholder release date as of now. Apparently, this is because Ubisoft is scrambling and they need certain key talent in order to assist on a Q2 game release, which if you don't know what that means, there's four quarters to a calendar year. So Q2 means Ubisoft has something that they think will hit that is coming out later in the year that they need help on. So because talent at the studio is working to make that future release come out more smoothly, Shadows is not being given the extra hands it kind of needs right now. So uh, I, I have to clarify this here. So Ubisoft does their financial year kind of weird. It's not actually Q2 being um, uh, April to, to June, I think. Those, those three months. Their Q2 is actually... Uh, ends, I think, in August, right? Because um, Star Wars Outlaws was in uh, Q2. That was a Q2 release for them. And they just recently announced that they were uh, significantly lowering their expectations by 30% from 500 million euros to 350 to 370 million euros in Q2, mainly due to soft sales for Star Wars Outlaws, as well as being behind expectations on X Defiant. So it's unclear what exactly they might be releasing in Q2. We know that they had delayed a couple of mobile games uh, uh, with the, I think it was like the, the division. They have like a mo mobile game with the division, and then potentially I think there's like a Rainbow Six game or something like that. So that is uh, just to provide some clarity there on where Ubisoft's Q2 is. Their Q2 ends in August, or it might actually I think it might end in September. So it's like July, August, uh, September, and then that's their Q2, and then 
October, November, December is their Q3. And then their Q4 is January through March, Q1 being April through uh, June. So that is how they do that. So uh, interesting that they are talking about another game that will release next year. Unclear what that game is. And Endymion didn't really provide any details, although he did say that, uh, that that his source did provide him some of that information. So maybe in a subsequent video, he might provide that. But he also said, so like I said, the release date may actually be pushed back even further. So we might see Shadows actually get pushed back maybe into Q2 uh, for Ubisoft next year, potentially even Q3, maybe pushing back an entire year. We'll see. Uh, we have heard from financial analyst Valiant Ren Renegade saying that the reason they put it into uh, February is because their year obviously ends uh, in March and they want to be able to say that they can indeed break even. So they're going to try and get as many sales as they possibly can from Assassin's Creed Shadows. Or maybe they're just trying to dupe investors at this point, wouldn't put it past them. Whereas like, hey, we're significantly... <laughs> lowering our revenue expectations for the entire year and that is because we're delaying Assassin's Creed Shadows but even if they don't even release Assassin's Creed Shadows in that year you can expect that that revenue would be even down even further and that stock could go even further as well obviously we know uh, there seemingly now is a hostile takeover uh, at place or at least trying to get the uh, Gimo family to sell Ubisoft take it private so we'll see what happens there lots of moving parts on that end. Uh, Endymion then revealed his source told him the game originally featured a Japanese male protagonist. He said this, I was also told when they originally saw the game, there was indeed a male Japanese protagonist with their own finalized art and even animations. They don't know if this character will be reintroduced to replace Yasuke, but they are skeptical that Ubisoft will actually remove Yasuke altogether due to the whole political, you know, backlash they'll get from journalists and so on. I 100% agree. I don't think that Yasuke is going anywhere. Uh, I think they're going to keep him as the main protagonist uh, and Naue as well. I just don't think that they're going to really be fundamentally changing this game uh, at all. I think what they are saying is what we're going to get. And uh, I do think they're probably just trying to polish the game. I don't expect any massive, massive changes uh, coming from Ubisoft. Uh, and Demian then shared details about the game. He says, they did say that the game's first act is heavily story-driven until it eventually opens up to your more traditional open-world Ubisoft experience, and that the big hurdle there, if they were to remove Yasuke, would be to practically change almost everything about Act 1, so to speak, if they were to remove the character entirely. So again, obviously, another piece of evidence here. Uh, obviously, this is rumor, but I do think this kind of reinforces my opinion that uh, it's unlikely for them to change uh, the game, fundamentally change the game by removing Yasuke. We know Ubisoft has their big DEI policies. Yasuke, I think, is clearly part of that. So I don't expect them to really change this game uh, whatsoever. It, it is interesting, though, because they did delay it, but I'm not really sure that they understand why, why people uh, aren't interested in purchasing this game. There's been so much backlash because uh, we've seen numerous reports that these people really don't even listen to uh, what people are saying. They see it as kind of just toxic gamer noise. We've seen a rumor regarding that from inside Ubisoft as well. So uh, <laughs> they probably don't even realize that maybe Yasuke is the reason why people are uninterested in this game and that they should have gone with the Japanese male protagonist in the first part because that is what people expect from a Assassin's Creed game set in feudal Japan. They expect a male Japanese protagonist. And Ubisoft knows all this stuff too, right? Uh, they, they, I was like 2017, 2018. I feel like they told us that uh, two thirds of players chose Alexios uh, over uh, Cassandra and given the option. So they, the players even choose the male characters uh, over the female characters when given the option. Uh, so could they remove Yasuke with this already done, but thrown aside Japanese character? It's a big maybe, but they said that they weren't sure of it yet. Uh, they also told me they heard rumblings that Sweet Baby Inc. may have had a hand in shadows, but they can't confirm that 100% yet. So take that allegation with a huge. Big fat shot of skepticism right now. Okay, I, that would not surprise me. We know that Kim Belair and uh, the, the CEO of Sweet Baby Inc. She previously worked for Ubisoft. Uh, I believe Ubisoft is listed on their website, and I think they worked on Valhalla with them. So the fact that they would work on Shadows would not surprise me at all. And I think the Shadows is being worked on by their uh, Canadian team, the Quebec team. So and that's where Sweet Baby Inc. is located. So uh, the fact that Sweet Baby Inc. would work with them is that would not surprise me whatsoever. Again, this is ground zero for Sweet Baby Inc. is Ubisoft. As for when this male protagonist was sidelined, and Demian said this, the game did first include a male Japanese main character, but they were swapped sometime during 2020, according to my source, for Yasuke instead. 
When asked why Ubisoft chose Yasuke over this male Japanese character, and Demiano revealed this. They said that Ubisoft was heavily influenced by the socio-political events of the time with stuff like, and no, I'm not kidding, George Floyd dying, the riots, and Black Lives Matter exploding in support. Ubisoft may have opted to include Yasuke in order to pander to identity politics because of Black Lives Matter. I think that's uh, abundantly obvious by the fact that they chose an African character to be the main character in a game set in feudal Japan. There's really no other explanation for this. If you look back at their history, they always choose characters that are located in the or from the setting that the games take place in. Now, obviously, you can argue that Naoi is from uh, is from Japan, but they typically have a male protagonist uh, from that uh, location, and uh, they do not. They do not uh, in this game. So I, I think it's very clear that this is the case. This does not surprise me whatsoever. And we've seen multiple studios actually say that they were inspired by a lot of what happened in 2020 uh, in recent uh, in recent days. Uh, obviously, I think Dustborn being one of them, they actually go back to 2016. It's like the political campaign there, the, the developers did. So the idea that this is happening now for games that have been in development for four or five years is not surprising uh, because that was all over the press and media. It was also at a time when uh, a certain uh, ideological faction controlled much of the Western world when it came to the media uh, and specifically social media that has uh, significantly changed due to Elon Musk purchasing uh, X and uh, taking it, uh, I think it's taking it private now. So that has changed. That has changed significantly. And so that kind of those echo chambers uh, have been significantly eroded. And uh, that uh, dominating narrative is no longer as dominating as it once was, despite it still controlling many of the levers of power, whether that be in government, whether that be in these corporations, and whether that be on competing social media um, companies, as well as elsewhere. And we've seen a lot of that erode, right? We've seen a lot of this woke agenda being eroded. Robbie Starbuck has done a really good job in corporate America where you look at things like Tractor Supply, John Deere, et cetera. I think his latest target is Toyota. We'll see how that goes. Ford has uh, made changes. So uh, lots of things are happening that are eroding this uh, woke ideological agenda in a lot of these uh, corporate spaces. But it's obviously still there, still massively infecting, especially uh, the entertainment sphere where you, when you look at companies like Amazon, the Walt Disney Company, and then these major video game companies such as Activision, Microsoft, uh, Ubisoft, etc., Sony, clearly all bought into this stuff too. Um, probably a, a big stalwart area. But let's continue here. And Demian then shared that his source informed him that Ubisoft, quote, was horrified by the response to Yasuke from the fandom, and they actually thought including him would be a really big selling point for the game. They apparently believed by inserting Yasuke that they could garner and pander to the modern audience that we know does not exist. They're trying to create this, been saying this for a while now. They are trying to create the modern audience. That's why they create a lot of these games is to indoctrinate people into these ideologies at a young age. Their slogan is literally from The Last Jedi, let the past die, kill it if you have to. And then they add on, we will rewrite history in order to make it so that the history that we are telling has always been that way. Woke has always existed. Everything has always been woke. It was always woke to begin with. That is uh, how these people operate. Uh, and they are constantly finding some way to <laughs> uh, continue their revolution against reality, because that is what they are, in the end, fighting against. And uh, they will lose. They will lose um, because uh, they're fighting reality. And they're fighting the truth. And uh, the truth stands opposed to them. Interestingly, one of Endymion's source, source, sources also provided, provided him information on why Ubisoft decided to delay the game. He said the thing that actually spooked Ubisoft more than anything else was how Japan reacted to the one-legged Tori Gate figure, or figurine. You can see it right here. There it is. I remember that, uh, that that's the merchandise product where Yasuke and Naoi are standing on a symbol of Nagasaki getting the atom bomb dropped on them. Yet these characters take place uh, in Japan well before that event happens or that even happens and this culturally devastating piece that proved that ubisoft was not adequate enough to make the game or really know anything about the time period it led to higher ups admitting defeat and demanding that the game get a cultural do-over if you will they wanted things to be more authentic because the one legged tory gate incident was so embarrassing and baffling that they didn't want anything else like that to happen again in their history it's interesting that uh it was a figurine that broke them it wasn't anything about thomas lockley or anything else like that it is a, a reference to <laughs> World War II 
is what uh, breaks these people. Uh, I'm a little bit skeptical of this one. I feel like if uh, they were shutting their ears for so long, uh, this wouldn't really uh, affect them either way because they kind of been brushing all of this stuff off to begin with. Uh, but maybe this one is true. Uh, but again, it's a little hard for me to believe given the fact that they ignored so many any other things, um, even Elon Musk saying DI kills art, et cetera, et cetera, you know, uh, and all of the other things that have gone on, um, whatever the, the, the woman's name that they hired as a consultant, who's all about the uh, generational things with, with young boys, uh, et cetera. That didn't, that didn't phase them, but, uh, this figurine, uh, did I, again, I, I just, that one's a little, a little, a little hard for me to stomach there, but you have to let me know what you guys make of that one. Let me know in the comments. And Demian then shared why Ubisoft chose February 2025. As of now, from what I'm being told, February 2025 is being chosen because Ubisoft believes there will be a AAA gaming drought around that time period. So they're hoping that they can capitalize by releasing Shadows then instead of November 15th, which was its original release date, even though uh, there are plenty of games coming around that time, like Monster Hunter Wilds uh, will release in that same time period. Uh, and Demian then opined, which makes me believe that Ubisoft will indeed push the game even further back than intended. Obviously, there is much speculation that uh, there's uh, Valentine's Day. There's clearly going to be maybe some kind of romantic interest there between uh, Yasuke and Naoi that they'll use to uh, promote that stuff. We know that they've already kind of been talking about this stuff, that there's options to make Yasuke gay and stuff in, in the game. So I, I could see them going that route, given the fact that it has been delayed to Valentine's Day. And then obviously, February being Black History Month. And the idea that they decided to inject Yasuke to begin with was based on Black Lives Matter, et cetera. I could see them doubling down on that as well. So I think those are reasons too. Uh, as far as it being uh, a, a AAA gaming drought, I'm not really sure if I uh, <laughs> buy that. Uh, again, I don't even think it matters whenever they delay, wherever they delay this game to. I just don't think people are interested in this game because of the fact that they chose Yasuke. They did not give you a Japanese male protagonist. And then obviously all of the disrespect that they've given to the Japanese people, the lack of authenticity, and just how they've handled things in general. I just don't think people are really interested in uh, purchasing this game uh, because of that. And then on top of the fact that Ubisoft has significantly damaged its brand uh, with uh, things like Skull and Bones, with Star Wars Outlaws, with X Defiant, etc. On top of this. So Endymion then shared that sources informed him that the rap music, which was featured in early promotional videos for the game, is being removed from the final product. One of the things for sure getting removed from Shadows, according to my sources, is indeed the rap hip-hop music for Yasuke. Apparently, Ubisoft brought out a questionnaire, and they were unanimously told that the rap music was totally wrong and completely unneeded, and that it was actually offensive that Ubisoft believed Yasuke needed a hip-hop battle theme in a game that was set well before such music existed, and it was only implemented because Yasuke was black, so that's going to be gone for sure. I think that's, if they do that, that is a good decision. They should publicly announce that. Uh, that should not be something that you just find out in the game. I think that would actually do a lot to uh, garner support for, for Ubisoft if they do indeed uh, recognize that that was a mistake and change that. And I do think people are willing, even myself, are willing to recognize when these companies do uh, good things. We saw this with Sonic the Hedgehog, the, the film, uh, when they changed the character design, made it more look like Sonic instead of that furry abomination that they had created. And uh, they were rewarded with a successful film that has now spawned a trilogy as well as the Knuckles spinoff series on Paramount+. Plus. So that was a massive successful move for them. And uh, more companies should follow suit and actually listen to what their audiences is telling them what they want, because it usually turns out well for them. And Demian also revealed they're going to be removing dialogue from the game that, according to my source, told me that it would actually enrage players if they heard it. He said, I wasn't given concrete examples of what kind of dialogue, but the source assumed it may have been Yasuke saying some sort of sociopolitical pandering nonsense about uh, how he was sold by white men or something and that he hates white men and white supremacy must be abolished and, and such. They're also removing this because, of course, if that were in the game, it would absolutely be highlighted and used to detract even more people from supporting the game in the future. So again, that would be a good thing if they are indeed removing it to promote that. But obviously, it still shows uh, where Ubisoft kind of is or was. Uh, in regards to pushing all of this DEI stuff and what their real agenda actually is, right? Because that's what the DEI agenda is all about. It's all about hating a specific group of people and trying to then claim that you're all inclusive when you're literally uh, based on hating a certain demographic. This is sick stuff.
So that is what Endymion had to say about Assassin's Creed Shadows. Uh, as I said, th this video that is here in the article, I'll have the link in the description below, which you can watch. I highly recommend watching it. There is probably about eight more uh, significant pieces uh, of information that I might write articles about, might do videos on from this video. That is how uh, much information he was able to garner from his various sources at Ubisoft uh, regarding upcoming Assassin's Creed games, regarding the state of Ubisoft in general, uh, kind of confirming some of the previous rumors we've heard, or at least providing uh, more uh, collaboration on those. And that might be not, not collaboration, but uh, corroborating pieces of rumors towards other rumors that we've seen, talking about the brain drain and things like that, and just how... Uh, terrible the game <laughs> the company is uh, when it comes to actual talent levels and things like that so look forward to those articles look forward to those videos but again uh, if you want to watch uh, endymion's entire video here i highly suggest doing it uh chock full of information right there but let me know what you guys make of what uh his sources in informed him about assassin's creed shadows what do you make of this potentially getting delayed even past February and uh, some of the changes that they are making and uh, the fact that they seemingly had a Japanese male protagonist but chose to sideline him because of the Black Lives Matter movement. Let me know in the comments below. Remember to always be charitable, especially to each other, but to always speak the truth.